ninja reflexes. And this distributes fuel pressure to the injectors going around and around. Let's show you how the max fuel setting thing works. So we're going to take our plungers and we're going to put them in. So you got to get it just perfect to get those to go in. You got this little guy here. It's got to go in there. These go like this. So that would be maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum. It lets it go out just a little bit further this way. This direction? Yeah. Then the other side needs to be switched from that. Set you up, set you up. Have it in this position, this can go out further and allow for more fuel between the two. And then as you turn it the other way, you see how it kind of brings it in. So that's minimum fuel setting, maximum fuel setting. This is basically like the charge, like if you reload ammunition, how much you'll, uh, you have a thing full to where it just dumps in. It doses this much every single time. If you're too far this way, you're going to be too rich, too much fuel, smoking, not good efficiency, etc. And if you're too far the other way, then you're not going to have enough fuel and you won't be able to get the RPMs or the power or whatever that you need. You'll run too lean. I don't know if how it works with a diesel, if that causes overheating like it does on a gas vehicle. But it's important that you have your fuel setting set to what it needs to be. Okay, so it's this way. I can see a little faint mark to it right there. I'm just going to screw these down and just kind of get them snug but not tight. This is an 8mm 12 point. The way that mine has to be is you can see that little things even right there with the B and the F on both sides. It needs to be like that but just plus just a hair. It's got to have just a touch of overhang like that. So that's a perfect setting for this one. Let's torque that down. 8mm 12 point is uh, 5 16 That also fits. And by hand you can't get it to do anything for some reason. But with an impact it's really easy. So I use an impact. And this is going to key up with our fly weights. So fly weights are part of the governor system. You can see that there's uh, four block weights in this. There's room for six, but two are missing for this particular model. This one's been refabbed or tuned or whatever, and they scraped off the markings on it. This one was a 918A. Now it's a 990OA or something like that. Is so we're gonna line this shaft up so that the little keyed, yeah, unique one is at the top. I'm gonna line this one up just the same way uh, this has to go in so that we've got the uh, kill button switch on this side and we've got the metering valve hole on the top. So you get past the o-ring. Did it take? Did it go? You just line up your holes right here. This is the bleeder valve that you bleed first. Got a new uh, copper washer on that. Get this just lined up just right and it should go in really easy. Probably best not to snug it down yet, but I'm thinking about cameras instead of what I'm doing, so that's why that happened. So there's another bolt that goes on the back side. There's three fasteners that hold this in. The bleeder screw, uh, this bolt here, and then there's also a valved uh, timing advance bolt that goes into it. This one has a ball in it, and that ball can fall out. We've got new o-rings already installed. Get this thing to where it's lined up in the up position. There we go like that. Put your ball in. I like to put it down on the ground and then just go like this. If this isn't tight then your gasket's going to leak. What's the point of rebuilding something and resealing it if it's going to leak, right? You don't have to kill it, just snug it. So we're going to put in the cav one that has a cavity in it. We're going to put the tit to this side, or the tit hole I should say. Put just a little diesel fuel on it, because like I say, this thing has really, really tight tolerances. Put a little on the inside. So if the cav thing's upside down, then you're good. Now this one, like I say, has a cavity because it has uh, the kill shutoff valve. If it doesn't have that, then it won't have a cavity. It will look more like this one that's just all smooth. Oh, just real quickly, it's got two holes. This one doesn't count. It doesn't do anything. But this one is the one that it uses to feed fuel in uh, from the uh, valve here. And then this one is the one that's for bypass. And it depends on the position of the piston in the bottom. So if the spring in the bottom's broken, 
then that can sit in the bottom and then you're just stuck all of the time in uh, priming mode and it won't work, it won't run. So I'm going to take the tit, line it up with the hole. He said tit. So that's what they say in Britain. And that's where this is from, so that's the terms that we'll use. So you just do these in a cross pattern just like you do with putting a tire on or anything else that helps it to sit down evenly. But we've got a new o-ring on our shutoff valve. We'll go ahead and put that in. They've all got new o-rings on them, so we'll just put them into place. These things go together pretty quick. This one just has one washer because it's not a through. And of course, this is on a Perkins engine that's in a coring telehandler or Skytrack. 1987 so this one's a little bit of an odd duck a lot of your older Massey Ferguson tractors or whatnot they're not going to have the regulator and they're not going to have the shutoff valve so whatever that's worth. 9 16 is what all of these are when you connect your lines it's helpful to have these a little bit loose but I'm just snugging them up for now and if they work, great. If not, I'll loosen them and that'll get them where they need to be. This one I want to favor this way a little. Just to give me some clearance from the shutoff valve. And like I say, I may have to change that later. But you know what? Can do. Sweet. Alright, we'll just take a break here for a minute. Let's do a little fidget spin. Isn't that great? Ninja like reflexes, you see that grab? Okay, next up we're going to do the governor assembly. So the flyweight basket here, um, when they get uh, pushed out by centrifugal force or inertia or whatever, it pushes this out and then that pushes on your metering valve. Your metering valve is the most important thing in the whole thing. Um, we talked about one thing that will cause your vehicle to not run and that's the spring braking and having that piston drop in and put it into priming mode. Another thing that can cause it to not run is if they sit and you get uh, varnish, this can get stuck. This is your metering valve. This is big time. This is like what controls the whole thing pretty much. So the rest of everything else from here over isn't the pump, but it's things that rain the pump in so that you don't have a runaway diesel on your hands. If you want to see more videos, be sure to click subscribe, ring the bell, and uh, click all the notification stuff. And that way you'll get a little bell notification at the top right of your screen.